Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. This video begins with us adding a new supply module to our Skylab 2 after having done so in the previous video with the International Space Station. So it's the same module, same food, water, and oxygen. We're just going to Skylab 2, which is in low Earth orbit, and we're using the Raptor 9 rocket or Unix rocket in its regular configuration, not with a Alex spacecraft. So just a normal launch vehicle with a single Raptor vacuum in the tail here on the second stage. The stage will handle all the rendezvous burns, but those will mostly not be done with the Raptor engine as it has a fairly high thrust to weight ratio even as we throttle it down. And so we'll be using the RCS for the rendezvous burns, which is of course somewhat tedious. So uh, here we have one, uh, though I think I did fire the Raptor at least one more time to help with the rendezvous. But yep, RCS burns for my live stream audience. Uh, I'm sure they love those. And off goes the payload. It has its own RCS to do the final bit of docking. And of course we can uh, deorbit the stage. Well, I don't know if we actually had enough Delta V to deorbit the stage. Maybe it just had to decay. It's not that high up, really. Uh, if you take a look at the periapsis of Skylab 2, we really ought to boost that up a bit. Its apoapsis is in a good position, but its periapsis is not so much. So anyway, that's what it looks like with the new supply module, which will hopefully allow us to time warp a lot more so we don't have to resupply it all the time. To that end also, we want to send the same supply module to our Mir station around the moon. For that, we will need a much larger rocket, and so we use the Vulcan, not the ULA Vulcan. This is the full-fledged Soviet Vulcan with the eight uh, boosters and the boosters looking like the tower of power that it is. Of course, in this case, I chose to use this launcher because we were sending the module to Mir. And we are, of course, launching out of Baikonur in this case, though I have launched uh, Energia out of Cape Canaveral as well, just for the heck of it. Uh, to get into orbit around the moon and rendezvous with the station, we do have a Briz stage there. So we are using that for that part of the business. And here is orbit. And of course the Vesuvius stage as such for our transfer stage. Really this is all fairly mundane business for our solar system tourism series. There's just basic supply stuff for the Earth and Moon. We've done this many times before. Uh, separating off of that stage was a little bit awkward. We sort of had to time warp to skirt off there. But here it is around the moon and uh, dropping the toroidal tank around the Briz, that extra expansion tank. I like how that separates. And rendezvousing with Mir. So, yep, no big deal, though it does take time, of course. And there are some good views. After coming into dock, we then deorbit the Briz, but I manage that in a very touchy sort of manner. As you're about to see, I just barely clear that module and uh, I was uh, perturbed by that myself, which is why I accidentally shut down and then had to relight the Briz. But anyway, it deorbited, so it's clear and we will not have debris from it. So Mir's in good shape, but I noticed that Lunar Gateway did not have the best amount of supplies, so the best way to deal with that was to bring people off of Lunar Gateway with the pair that we had docked to it. And so that's what I'm doing here. We sent the pair for a reason and now we're going to use it. We're going to bring these Kerbals back. These are the automated, automatically generated Kerbals, including Valentina, as opposed to the tourists, which of course I have to create manually. But there it is starting up its burn to, well first burn to return to Earth. It's going to have to do this burn, it does a correction burn, and then it also has to do a full-on capture burn at uh, for low Earth orbit. So it has to use 3,000 meters per second here around Earth at its periapsis in order to get into a place where something else can rendezvous with it. And that's the purpose of the pair, to go out there 
and come back like this. Here we are trying to rendezvous with Skylab 2 in order to place these Kerbals on it. Skylab 2 uh, might have had a pod at this point, but in any case, I was trying to rendezvous, but I forgot about the docking port situation. We don't have the kind of docking port that Skylab has free, so I decided to launch a new little uh, capsule in order to bring the Kerbals back. So this is a Lynx on a Sajita rocket and a uh, grossly oversized vertical... Uh, yeah, that thing. It doesn't have any colliders on the top of it, so it's fine. It's not going to cause any damage. But yeah, I gotta work on that. That was made for the Sajita rocket, but its height is made for the Sajita heavy. So that's why it's as tall as it is. So anyway, this seemed to be going well, but then I had a staging problem. So those go that, that stage goes off, but uh, I accidentally staged off the decoupler for the pod and its service module itself as so yeah not very good nobody was on it because we were sending it up to grab the three kerbals so once again after uh, fixing the staging we uh, are off and this time in good shape and that's the look of it as the first stage runs out and separates and the second stage proceeds. These are also methane oxygen engines, but only 1,000 kilonewtons compared to more than double that for the Raptor engine. And we are making orbit. So there's like a mini thing with only five of these engines on the first stage though. And the spacecraft is free. Makes its rendezvous burns with Skylab 2. Well, not with Skylab 2, with the pair in orbit near Skylab 2 and docking with the pair. The internal volume of the pair for the Kerbals is pr pretty tight considering they have to last for a few days. It's, uh, yeah. They'd probably rather go over to the moon in the Lynx rather than the pair. Uh, though, I mean, when you think about it, if you fit the pair's uh, cabin in the Lynx, it's not that much extra volume. But they'd probably like that extra volume. Okay, so here we go. Deorbiting. Separation of the service module. And orientation. And the whole re-entry business. We were watching the green run test for the SLS first stage at this time. And so... Yeah, that's what's in the bottom right corner, and so briefly we won't have audio because there'll be people talking as part of that live stream that we were watching, and I don't want to talk over them. Next up, we needed to bring back uh, Aaronim from the International Space Station because he wanted to, and this is one of our tourists, uh, he wanted to go to Mars. So he paid for a Mars trip, and I needed to bring him back to Earth after he had previously paid for a ISS trip. So decided to use the Soyuz for that. Uh, two RD-0146s on the second stage and one RD-191 on the first stage. Basically, it's like Angara 5, uh, sorry, Angara 1, except we've got the two Hydrolox engines on the second stage. And I was wondering whether that change, instead of using the regular second stage, would be good enough to help uh, get a Soyuz to orbit, because I thought it would. And so here we are, the first stage is done. The regular upper stage for the Angara one is just kerosene and oxygen, so this is much more efficient. Uh, the question is whether it's efficient enough. The Angara one would not be able to send the Soyuz uh, to orbit, so. And the result was that it was close, but not quite, but that the Soyuz would be able to finish orbit. Uh, unfortunately, the RCS on the Soyuz seems to be uh, mis seem to be misconfigured, so needed to fix that. It's using some fallback plumes, and there was no plume on the main engine either, so that wasn't showing a plume even though it was firing. Anyway, so we've got this these really large plumes on it as we approach the ISS here, and get set to dock. And 
And there we go. Nope, 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 nope. Still a little bit more. It paused there. That made me think that I was docked. But okay, there we are. And off again once we transferred the Kerbals in. I think it was two Kerbals coming back on this. Uh, Aaronim and one generic Kerbal. And we watched the green run test with the RS-25s. That went well, I think, that time. And we separated off the orbital module and service module from the descent module for Soyuz. It re-entered without any problems. And we got our future Mars tourist back home safe. So that left us to manage some sort of Mars mission. I had to figure out what exactly we were going to send to Mars. Previously we had sent a Kerbal who wanted to land on Mars, but the lander wasn't very good. So I decided to try and figure out what kind of lander we wanted to use this time. Here's one based on the LEM with methane oxygen engines, uh, so uh, ED1s, those mine 362nd ISP. Here's the Lynx cabin on top of the, uh, I think that's the forward module of HTV. Anyway, it was shiny, so I decided to use it. And that didn't seem to work. I've got the orange there to try and be a sky crane to drop it off. I tried my wraparound service module plus the Lynx and an ISRU unit to replenish its propellant. So there'll be a heat shield underneath all this. That's the point of the wraparound service module. Uh, so yeah, it looks like that and that whole thing would land on the surface of Mars. It'd be a lot of drag going back up though. You can see we even got the parachutes on to see if we'd have enough Delta V. And a landing, of course, we don't need that much Delta V. It's just after we use the drills, we would get it topped off and that'll need to be enough to get to orbit. But drilling is awkward with this. I was trying to land right on the bottom of it without any landing legs, but that didn't look like a friendly option. Here we have the Salamander pod from USI, and this has a nice form factor. You can see this is a very nifty sort of lander we have here. Probably, I mean, the, the Kerbals or humans would have to be prone. It is scaled up for a realism overhaul, by the way. Um, they would have to be lying prone, so that's not the nicest thing ever, but but as long as they're only in there for landing and they don't have to stay in there for any longer than that, I guess it's not too bad. And here we've got the sky crane-ish orange on top of it. So that was another option. Moving along though, Aaronim wanted comfortable accommodations to Mars, and so I decided to pull out the NTP hab. And this was based on NASA's NTP architecture. It's based on the hydrogen tank of the EUS. As you can see there, it's the same diameter. Basically, it'd be that tank plus the remaining volume between the module I have and that tank would be where the water and uh, oxygen tanks would go. So it's sort of like that. Here it is launching on the first two stages of Saturn V with upgraded engines, I think. I think I used uh, F1As and J2Ss. And so they have higher capacity and we're just putting it into low Earth orbit and then uh, the nuclear engines plus two more hydrogen tanks will rendezvous with it. So right now it's the HAB plus uh, one of the hydrogen tanks. It's not actually anywhere near the capacity of the Saturn V, I think. The HAB is about 45 tons and the hydrogen tank is about 45 tons, so we're talking about 90 tons only. So there we go. And pending separation. And of course there's also supplies, but yeah. Oh sorry, 80 tons actually. So a little bit lighter than I thought. And we have the other two hydrogen modules plus the propulsion module. So that does require the upgraded engines for Saturn V. As you can see, it's about 134 tons. So, off we go. A little bit heavier off the launch. Rather a slow ascent initially. 
not only is there the mass of the payload, of course, but with three modules stacked on top of the rocket, that's quite a large fairing, and a hefty one at that. So here we are at the end of the first stage, and I decide to separate the fairing here, while we have no acceleration, and then fire up the second stage. That was probably for the best. And so on we go. One of the problems that we'll encounter with this whole deal is that even though I put MLI layers, it doesn't really manage the MLI layers the way I thought it would. And the boil off is just all over the place sometimes. Some people suggested that uh, sometimes the boil off is trying to catch up to what the boil off ought to have been. You know, it's trying to, when we time warp, it's trying to catch up. But it's really hard to figure out sometimes. So, yeah. When you're dealing with so much liquid hydrogen, the boil off gets to be a real serious issue, especially if you're counting on it to help you capture into orbit around Mars, which we are in this case. So we need to do a transfer capture on Mars and ideally be able to come back, but that's secondary. We could potentially refuel it or use something else to bring them back, but we really, really, really need to be able to capture around Mars with it. That is not optional. Anyway, so we'll have to bring crew up to this, but it's in orbit right now, all assembled, and we'll see that in a subsequent video. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.